The Orient Art Center's Dragon on the Lake Festival celebrated its 50th year with music and art in downtown Lake Orion and dragon boat races on the lake. A bit of Hollywood came to Lake Orion as singer and actor Tyler Hilton performed at the gazebo in Children's Park. The Chamber of Commerce welcomed its newest member with a ribbon cutting ceremony in downtown Lake Orion. And ONTV's Joe Johnson traveled to Ferndale to capture the kickoff of the 2024 Woodward Dream Cruise. Hello everyone, I'm Stacey Calloway. And I'm Lexi McKinney. We'll have those stories and so much more on this edition of ONTV News. Art Center was founded in 1979 and its goal is to nurture artistic expression and creativity for individuals of all ages through classes, programs, exhibitions, and events. In 2009, its board of directors wanted to do something special to celebrate the Art Center's 30th and Dragon on the Lake was born. Now, 15 years later, the annual festival is still going strong and the community once again came out for the biggest party of the summer. The streets of downtown Lake Orion were closed on August 23rd, 24th, and 25th as 110 vendors, sponsors, and artists set up tents along Flint and Broadway Street, almost reaching M24. In addition to vendors, there was live music at the Tiki Bar and Dragon Pub, and the Kids Zone was set up in Children's Park, making this the largest dragon on the lake festival in recent memory. Talk about the importance of having artists well represented this week. Right, that's one of our biggest goals. I was talking about with our board president about that, and it's fun because there's art and everything. It's in the music, it's in what you guys do on TV, it's, it's bringing on um, the chalk garden, and then even celebrating the artists in the market. This is their livelihood and how they make their, their money. So it's fun to talk to them too, to encourage them to come into our exhibitions and have a bigger presence with us throughout the year. So art is definitely like one of our, our biggest um, key components of the event. On Friday night, Lake residents boarded their pontoon boats and took to the water for the annual lighted boat parade organized by the Lake Orion Lake Association. Led by the always popular fire-breathing dragon, the parade made its way around the perimeter of the lake. A panel of judges awarded points based on lights, decorations, and overall eye appeal. The winners were announced in the Dragon Pub on Saturday. In third place was Noah's Ark, captained by Rick Vandenboom. Second place was awarded to Team USA, captained by Chris Dewey. And taking top honors was Bone Voyage, captained by Kurt Stiller. Cash prizes were donated by Racy's Extreme and Rick's on the Lake. Fifteen years ago, Dragon on the Lake began with the Chalk Art Challenge, and the event returned on Saturday. Front Street became an enormous canvas as 36 artists of all ages got to work on their masterpieces. Two judges from Oakland University judged the artwork in six different categories. At the end of the day, the winners were announced. Taking best of show honors was Sophia Karras of Stony Creek High School. I've done a couple of thumbnail sketches, um, trying to decide what color schemes I wanted to do. I kind of want to do like more of a storybook theme to it. But yeah, just like, I guess I've done it a couple, I've done it one year before this. So I had a little bit of experience, but yeah. Um, a couple years ago, I also did a little bit of a book theme, so I wanted to kind of continue off of that and like build it even further and kind of um, expand on my original idea. So yeah, and I figured like books, fairy tales, dragons, it kind of all goes together, so yeah. On Saturday night, the community converged on the Dragon Pub to enjoy live music from bands like Parallel Fifth and the Square Pegs. Between bands, Michigan artist Dave Santilla painted two portraits in his unusual style, Dave begins by flinging paint onto a black canvas, and within minutes, he flips the canvas over to reveal stunningly accurate portraits of celebrities, in this case, Prince and David Bowie. The two portraits were immediately auctioned off to the crowd in attendance, raising over $3,500 in the process. $1,500 is the number of the Bowie and what else? Last year, sold $1,500 right here. Dragon boat races didn't become part of Dragon on the Lake until the second year of the festival. Participation took a hit during the COVID pandemic, but the event seems to be rebounding with hundreds of paddlers taking part in this year's event. On early
early Sunday morning, 14 teams made up of 20 paddlers each converged on Greens Park for the opening ceremony of the Dragon Boat Races, once again organized by GWN Dragon Boats. After announcements made by race director Rob Cavanaugh, the first two teams boarded their boats and headed out to the starting line near Park Island. Five races made up the first heat. We caught up with the captains of the winning teams as they came off the dock. So what has the preparation been like for the race today? Well, we practiced yesterday and most of us were in the boat last year. So we had a little experience. So just our practice yesterday and hyping each other up. That's our practice. That's how we get ready. So how did you feel after this first race? Are we feeling good? Are we tired already? Was there any challenges? It's exhausting. Every time you race, it's exhausting, but we feel good. We're very motivated. What's the goal for your team today? Um, my boss really wants that trophy in our lobby, so that's our goal. Um, well, every year it's always an adrenaline rush. Um, we've been doing this since 2015, so every year's first race is just a great way to get back in it. We love it. So what is the goal for your team today? Uh, we're taking that trophy home and we are raising funds and awareness for breast cancer uh, through Real Men of Oxford. Uh, we're raising money for the American Cancer Society, so it's a win-win. Who are we? All right, I am here with OMG, who is on a mission from God as they are defending their first place title from last year. What is going on? Congratulations. How are we feeling right now? I think we're feeling pretty good. Um, this is uh, first first run, and uh, we've got we've got some good uh, some good energy going into the races today. So I know last year it was like you were number one. It's going to be hard to be number one again. Everyone is talking like we're going to win this, we're going to do this, but how are you guys going to persevere through to be number one again? Well, um, you know, all of it is timing, and it's all uh, just a really, really strong effort from everybody working together. So if we do that, then it's a win. When no matter what happens, if there's a trophy or medals or whatever, all of all. What's most important is that we're doing this together. We're doing this for the community. We're doing this for um, Christ Redeemer, St. Joe, and, and uh, um, St. John Fisher, and, and the parish families of Bald Mountain. So, um, and, and, and this great event in this, in this community of Lake Orion. So um, we're all Lake Orion and Oxford and Clarkson people, and we're all coming together to, um, and if that, that's a win. One, two, three. OMG. One, two, three. OMG. One, two, three. OMG preparation been like for the races today? We paddle twice a week in Windsor, Ontario, Canada, and we've been practicing since May, so we're ready to give her. I guess it showed, eh? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Community team, and uh, we have a number of new members, but uh, we've got a lot of people who have been with the club for a while. I love that. And what is the goal for today? Win! Yeah. <laughs> We had a little bit of a rocky start. We were trying to figure out our lane. Next race, we're going to be even better and really show you what we've got. I love it. So, what is your goal for today? Take home first place? That's our goal. That's always our goal. What is your favorite part as a team about doing things like this? Our favorite part is always being together. It's not necessarily the races. It's the fun that we have after. We are a big community supporter for Ontario. We work for our community. We represent our community. In general, we love to be with each other. We hang out all the time, all year round. We just love to be together and support the, support the community. This year, we raised $10,000 for our local hospice. We're gonna be decorating our dragon boats into gondolas. So they've been retrofitted. We're gonna be taking a couple couples on a romantic ride on the Thames, off for a beautiful dinner, and then we'll be back. So we love to give back to our community whenever we can. We are the dragons! We are the dragons! The times from the first heat were added to the times from the second heat to determine the seeding for the championship round. In the last race of the day, the top three teams with the fastest times faced off for the Dragon Boat title. Flossed at Sea occupied lane one, Dragon Down Breast Cancer was in lane two, and Team OMG was in lane three on the right. Let's see how it played out. <laughs> Let's go! Let's go! Let's 
to call, ladies and gentlemen. Way too close to call. It was virtually impossible to determine which team crossed the finish line first. Race organizers had to go through the video to verify the results. I caught up with race director Rob Cavanaugh after the championship race. I, I think it was one of the most fun Dragon on the Lake Dragon Boat Festivals that we've ever had. As you can tell, it's hot out here today. That definitely affected the paddlers' grip. It was slipping as they were sweating. But the competition was incredible. The team spirit was here. There was Lake Orion love. Everybody was cheering all the other teams on. It was a fantastic day here in Greens Park. Well, we had some awesome competition, great team spirit out here today, and we were raising money for the Orion Arts Center. I'd like to say, because I was working on the sponsorships this year, and it is so important that people, like he's saying back there, everybody contributing, kicking in together, giving what they can. Maybe it's a little, maybe it's a lot, but it's really this collaboration and teamwork, and it's an army of people that are putting this event together, and I appreciate every single one of them. So thanks to our sponsors, thanks to our workers, thanks to our board of directors at the Art Center, but most importantly, thanks to the community for making it what it is. All participants were invited to come to the Tiki Bar area where the results were announced. Finishing in third place with a time of 138.92 was Team Dragon Down Breast Cancer. Coming in second place was Team Flossed at Sea with a time of 136.96. Which means that Team OMG on a mission from God was named the winner of the Dragon Boat Races for the second year in a row. Their time of 136.28 was less than a second faster than the second place team. They were awarded the coveted Dragon Cup trophy for their impressive victory. And we all come together um, as, as, a, as a community and it's in this event that is so emblematic of coming together to, uh, to be good sports, to, to um, be unified in, in just energy and love. So thank you. This is amazing. I talked to Orient Art Center director Holly Nicosia and asked her to look back on the unforgettable weekend in Lake Orion. Yeah, it was a beautiful weekend. I think we're all a little tired and uh, it's a once a year thing, but we have such an amazing team here, our board of directors and Stephanie McIntyre from Sam Entertainment. It's just, it came together so wonderful. You go to these meetings every month and you just hope for the best thing and I really think we knocked it out of the park this year and, and we had such a great community outpour with the, the music last night and the Dragon Pub and it's just fun to see the community come out and embrace this event every year. Of course, all proceeds generated by Dragon on the Lake benefit the Orion Art Center. The Art Center Board is hoping to use that money to rebuild the porch, which is the original porch on the 100-year-old building. The cost is estimated to be around $14,000. For more information, visit orionartcenter.org. The Lake Orion DDA's LO Live Concert Series kicked off on July 10th and will soon be wrapping up the season. Recently, a little bit of Hollywood came to downtown Lake Orion and residents packed Children's Park. On the evening of Wednesday, August 14th, the DDA's LO Live Concert Series continued with a performance by singer and actor Tyler Hilton. It was a perfect summer night as Tyler took to the stage of the gazebo in Children's Park with his family. I grew up going and I fell in love with music, going to concerts like this. So the setting with the kids running around and the people on, you know, picnic chairs and blankets, like this is my vibe. I love it. I love it. The California native began his music career in 2000 and has since transitioned into acting, playing Elvis Presley in the 2005 film Walk the Line. He also played Chris Keller on the popular CW series One Tree Hill, which ran for nine seasons. Oh, it was like a turning point. I mean, you never know. Any entertainer like has no control over what that thing is going to be that's going to put them over the edge. And One Tree Hill was that, you know. It just, I mean, of all the, th even for all the actors on the show, of all the thousands of TV shows that are out there, I mean, it's one of those shows that's still around. I mean, 20 years later, it's unbelievable. And so to have gotten to be a part of that, all the other random things I've done that have fallen by the wayside and were fun, but, you know, didn't stick around. One Tree Hill is just like stayed, you know, so it's amazing. It really is. 
Tyler was also the reason for Taylor Swift's teardrops on her guitar, appearing in the 2007 music video. He has a four-year-old daughter, although she isn't quite a Swifty yet. No, she's not yet. No, we're, we're firmly in Disney Princess land right now. So we're singing all those songs, yeah. But she knows that I'm a singer and she's starting to get the, the vibe that that goes on. So I, I think different friends of hers, parents are into my music and stuff. So she actually started making fun of me recently. And when I walk in the room, sometimes she'll say, ladies and gentlemen, Tyler Hilton. I don't know where she got that. But, uh, so she's already roasting me. Tyler told us he composed the music for the upcoming film, My Old Ass, written and directed by his wife, Megan Park. He's also looking forward to touring after taking a long hiatus. Well, I'm going to help my wife promote that film. It's the first movie score I've done, and I'd love to do more of that. So that's, um, that's coming up next. I'm going to tour the rest of the year as much as I can, just because I haven't done that to promote my new music. And then next year, I've got a children's book coming out, so I might do like a children's album or something like that around that. But So we'll get ready for that next. For information about tour dates and new music, visit TylerHilton.com. Each year, Oakland County works with local municipalities to help them develop their downtown areas to promote economic development and historic preservation. Recently, the Lake Orion DVA has reason to celebrate thanks to a special recognition from the county. On the evening of August 12th, the Downtown Development Authority, members of the Chamber of Commerce, and other businesses in downtown Lake Orion came together to celebrate the 17th consecutive Main Street accreditation. A porch party began at 5.30 p.m. prior to the council meeting in the village of Lake Orion with food and other sweet treats offered to thank and congratulate those who provide continuous efforts to manage and preserve the historic downtown Lake Orion. <laughs> so tonight, in front of Village Council, the DDA is going to receive her award for our accreditation. And that accreditation is not something that's just given, it has to be earned. And so there are many different levels that, um, you know, you have to participate, you have to provide opportunity, it has to be economic development, it has to be design, it has to be so many things um, within the community. But what we are really excited about is because this celebration is kind of the kick you know, the, the big party, if you would, um, because in two years, we are going after the GAMSA Award because of the Lumberyard Project. And that is not, that is going to bring not only national, but global attention to our downtown. We've got some of the most amazing businesses. We've got historic preservation. We've got very pro progressive designs. Downtown Lake Orion was awarded this accreditation by Main Street America in Main Street, Oakland County, with partners, visitors, sponsors, and the village of Lake Orion continuing to support the upcoming developments and projects. The nicest thing is it's a team thing, right? So everybody has their little role, and when we do something that's really cool, the rest of the team comes running to say, hey, good job, guys. And we would run for them, too. So um, it's heartwarming to see all the friends. And uh, the new chief is here uh, for the village police, and he's awesome. Mark's awesome guy. Uh, and so we're excited to have all of our friends out here. Be able to provide just wonderful businesses that have great product, restaurants that have great food, having a wonderful social district. Uh, it's, it's the total package. For more information or for details about upcoming events, visit downtownlakeorion.org. One of the perks of being a member of the Orion Area Chamber of Commerce is a ribbon cutting ceremony to celebrate grand openings, major milestones, or even just becoming a new member to the chamber. On Thursday, August 22nd, representatives of the Chamber of Commerce, along with family and friends, gathered in downtown Lake Orion to welcome the chamber's newest member, Moonstone Real Estate. One. Two, three, Moonstone! Woo! All right. Thank you. A resounding thank you because we ourselves have always uh, supported small businesses. And if you look around in the city of Lake Orion, that's what you see. You see a lot of small businesses. And we have always been strong proponents of small businesses and have always supported them. So we thank everybody that has. Uh, supported us throughout the years really and not only in the Lake Orion community but in surrounding cities. I mean I love it. I love small businesses, supporting small businesses. This is what the American dream is. 
Um, I just want to thank everybody for coming out to support, and I've always, I've always loved um, going to downtown because I love how um, we so, like this whole community just supports small businesses, and yeah, I just want to thank everybody for that. Well, I've always loved downtown Lake Orion, so it's just really amazing seeing everybody come together for the special event, and I just love my parents and what they do and everything. Thank you so much. Moonstone Real Estate began in 2020, and like most businesses, was affected by the COVID pandemic. Four years later, the business is going strong, but because they don't have a brick and mortar location, the owners partnered up with Boutique Chic in downtown Lake Orion to host their ribbon cutting ceremony. So Boutique Chic is the name of the store, and it came about because uh, I actually own a small business with my daughters, uh, hair accessory and fashion accessory business. And so Joyce introduced me to Annalisa, who's the owner. And so my products are now in her boutique and that's how that came about. So when it came time to do the ribbon cutting for Moonstone, it seemed obvious to, to have it here at Boutique Chic. So that's why we chose it and that's why we're here today. Moonstone primarily serves Oakland, Macomb, Lapeer and Wayne counties and offers expertise in both residential and commercial real estate. At Moonstone, we offer um, a lot of things. So we actually, um, uh, we're working with clients uh, on selling and buying uh, properties, not just uh, houses, but in businesses, uh, vacant lands, uh, um, pretty much all uh, buying and selling all uh, the people needs uh, for uh, their own things, especially in the residential, we're more in residential, but we're doing a lot of commercials too, if they really need it. So through, the, through all Michigan, but mostly we're more company, more company, but uh, we're very much in the old Michigan area where they like to go. So we go for them. For more information, you can visit MoonstoneBuyAndSell.com. You can also find them on Facebook and Instagram. And finally, as the summer season begins to wind down, car buffs are running out of time to show off their awesome rides. Of course, the entire Metro Detroit area looks forward to the Woodward Dream Cruise. And thanks to our own Joe Johnson, he traveled to Ferndale for the official kickoff. On the evening of Friday, August 16th, dignitaries gathered on Nine Mile Road near Woodward to officially kick off the 29th Woodward Dream Cruise. Visitors enjoyed a display of emergency vehicles along Nine Mile Road as speakers talked about what Dream Cruise means to Oakland County. Have a blast. We love Ferndale, love the kickoff, we love the Dream Cruise. It's unique, it's pure Oakland County, 13 miles of amazing cars and lots of fun. Do all the burnouts you want in some different county. <laughs> Just enjoy it out here. This isn't a place to do your performance car. It's a spot to show it off, have a blast, look at them. We're going to keep it safe. Enjoy. Welcome to Oakland County and especially to fashionable Ferndale. The sun is shining on the beautiful city of Ferndale as we are getting ready to cruise. to represent this incredible community from Eight Mile to Pontiac, the heart of Oakland County, the heart of the Dream Cruise. You all send me every single week to the nation's capital, and guess what? I get to brag about who we are, and I get to brag about our cars, and I get to brag about the people who make our cars, and this is the time for us to shine. I love the Woodward Dream Cruise. I am so excited to be here with you all today because this event is such a unifying event for our community. Just like Woodward goes up and down, linking us all together, so does this Dream Cruise, so do these cars, so does this heritage, because that's who we are here in Michigan. We love our cars. And as your Secretary of State, as the Chief Motor Vehicle Officer, I am proud to make sure that it's as easy as possible, as easy as ever before, to get your license and to get your plates so you can get on the road and keep driving because that's what we're proud of. We make it here in Michigan. We're gonna keep making it here in Michigan and let's celebrate this wonderful experience because it honors our past and it gets us looking towards the future. Following the speeches, everyone lined up near Woodward to cut the ribbon to officially get the 2024 Dream Cruise underway. Six, five, four, three, two, one. 
The ribbon cutting ceremony cleared the path for the annual emergency vehicle parade, which made its way north on Woodward with lights flashing and sirens blaring. <laughs> Of course, the Dream Cruise officially takes place on Saturday. More than 1 million spectators and 40,000 classic cars descended on a 16-mile stretch of Woodward involving nine participating communities in Oakland County. Well, you know, it started as just a simple idea about raising money for a soccer field, a local resident here in Ferndale. And what turned out was a greater number of people that wanted to show that the, what their love is when it comes to the classics. And then that was in 1995. And since then, it's grown to be what it is today. And so everything is about what the audience wants and what the audience is seeking. So we try to keep up with what their demand is to make this continue for the next 29 years. In Ferndale, this is Joe Johnson reporting for ON TV News. Thanks, Joe. And with that, we'll wrap up this edition of ON TV News. On behalf of the hardworking ON TV News team, I'm Stacey Calloway. And I'm Lexi McKinney. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time.